slower. Gangbusters. Good evening. I'm Sergeant Jack Marcola of the Chicago Detective Bureau, and this is Detective Lawrence Courtney. Courtney and I worked on the case that is the subject of tonight's gangbusters story. The case of Charles Mendoro, Edward Damiani, and Louis Faroli. A case that was to add a new note of terror in the American crime scene. I have here two items that figured prominently in the case. This metal cylinder a homemade but deadly weapon, and a snapshot of this little girl. I'll tell you more about it in just a moment. Our story begins on the south side of Chicago. Though the majority of the citizens are law-abiding, this area has provided much material for the police files. An apartment house was the home of the Mendoros. Much adored little Betty Mendoro was happy, playing peacefully in the living room. Hey, give me that. Dolly, I told you not to go into that room, didn't I? You might have been hurt bad, real bad. Gee, Gee. What is it? Didn't I tell you to keep that workroom door locked? My kid might have gotten killed. Well, I didn't leave it unlocked. You must have done it yourself. Five chance with my kid around here. You must be nuts. Dolly, now listen to your old man. Don't you ever go in that room again. Get it? OK. Well, here's a dime. I want you to go down the corner and get an ice cream cone, okay? He was a strange man, this Charles Mendoro. As cruel and ruthless as a beast of the jungle. But again, like some beast of the jungle, he had a strong affection for his offspring. If anything would have happened to my kid, it would have been too bad for you. She's my kid, too, in case you forgot. Never mind. Just keep that door locked. Who's that? The boys. Come on in. Mendoro's gang consisted of Edward Damiani, a hoodlum with a long record, and Louis Faroli. Sit down. Gene's fixing some lunch. So what's hot, Mendoro? We're ready to start operating again. Yeah? When? This afternoon. What's the angle? Got a real new switch. A real new angle. You know them currency exchanges, them check cashing joints? Must be a couple of hundred of them here in Chicago. Yeah, and most of them's got bulletproof cashier cages and direct wires to the cops. Yeah, that's right. But I got a gimmick here that's gonna take care of all that. Been working on it for a long time. Now I'm ready to make some scores. Well, what's that, a bomb? No, stupid. Gene! Gene! Yeah? Bring me a paper bag, a big one. I got a gimmick here that's gonna mean a lot of scores. Because some currency exchanges are loaded with dough. And with this gimmick of mine, we're gonna take a lot of it away from them. Listen, Gene, me and the boys are going downtown on business. See my kid takes a nap on time, huh? Get him! His kid! Okay, just see she has a nap. Kids are supposed to have naps. Come on, boys. We're going to work. Later that afternoon, these three criminals pulled up in front of the currency exchange at 311 North Pulaski Avenue. Okay, you know what you gotta do? Oh, sure, sure, I got it. What's wrong, Charlie? Sure hate to work with a dope like that. Yeah, but he's been in the rackets a long time. Sure, he's been in a stir a long time. Supposed to show you what kind of a dope he is. Come on. Mendoro picked a slack period right after lunch when there was nobody in the exchange, except Miss Agnes Olson, the cashier. Hi. You 
some cash paychecks here? Sure, that's our business. Yeah. You seem to have a lot of cash on hand, huh? Yes, we have some cash. Uh -huh. That's what I thought. Now look, sister, this is a stick-up. Just hand the dough you got over back there and you won't get hurt. Don't make no foolish moves and don't get noisy. You and your friend better get out of here fast. Look, you better do like I said, or you're gonna be dead, real dead. I'm not scared of you. What's that you've got there? I'll tell you what this is. It's gas, poison gas. All I gotta do is push down this valve and you're through. So hand over the dough, huh? I don't believe you. And I wouldn't give you the money if I did. Put down that phone. Operator, give me police headquarters. Put down that phone! Is this police headquarters? This is the money exchange at 311 North Pulaski. All right, sister, you asked for it. There's a man here trying to bluff me into giving him some money. He has some kind of contraption he says is poison gas. Okay, Charlie, that's enough. Let's land. I'll say it's enough. I'm going to teach this dame a lesson she ain't never going to forget. And neither will anybody else. Come on, Charlie. Charles Mendoro left behind a cruel mark. This was the introduction of poison gas, a new weapon in the criminal warfare against decent society. The alert was immediate, a result of the courageous yet foolhardy defiance of the cashier. Police wasted no time in getting to the scene of the violence that apparently had netted Mendoro and his gang nothing. Courtney and I reached the currency exchange a few minutes after the bandits had driven away. And while waiting for the ambulance, we tried to question Miss Olson. I still say you overdid it. If you were smart enough to question me, you wouldn't be dumb enough to be working for me. Well, you didn't have to give her the big load. No. Just what would you have done? Just enough to scare her and make her hand over the dough. You hide her. Was she ever scared? Was she about to hand over the dough? No, she called the cops. Yeah, I'll stop her chances of making a big haul. So maybe this one did get away, but it set the stage for all the others. Are you kidding? No. Maybe this dame did play it brave. I figured it might happen the first time. But when word gets around what I've done, the others will be too scared to open up their yaps. And there's fresh pickings ahead, and what we did today will make that take more sighting. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't very pretty, was it? I wish we could do something for that Olsen girl. She had nerve to spare. Yeah, but well, it's gonna take a lot more nerve to pull her through this. Doctor said her lungs were damaged. Any report from the lab? 
Not yet. Mm, I hate to twiddle my thumbs until Agnes Olsen regains consciousness and identifies these men from our mug files. I've yeah, got men out covering in the vicinity of the exchange. Maybe they'll come up. Marcolo. Oh, yes, Jim. Mm -hmm. Give me that again. I never heard of it. Okay, Jim, thanks. Poison gas. So vicious they outlawed in war. Yet some mad dog uses it to rob a bank. There's two things we can do. Find out where they get this poison gas, and then find the men who use it before they use it on someone else. Yeah, but you left out one thing. We keep a 24-hour guard on Agnes Olson. She's our only witness. Right. Miss Olson look at any pictures in our rogues gallery. Three days after the attempted robbery, in spite of everything that the doctors could do to save her, Miss Agnes Olson died. Now, it was murder. Murder by poison gas. Hey, Charlie, did you see this? Yeah. That dame died. Yeah? So what about it? Well, we think we ought to get out of town for a while. You crazy? Just when we're starting to make some scores? Look, I give this dame a lot of gas, and I did it on purpose. So no one will get the idea we're kidding when they see one of these things coming at them. So he's full of them currency exchange places. Just do like I tell you. Pretty soon we're going to be sitting pretty, huh? Come on, Dolly, baby. Come on, honey. Ah, that's sweetie. <laughs> How about taking a picture of you and the little girl, mister? Hey, that's a great idea. Where do you want us to stand? Oh, right there. It's fine. Yeah. You don't want to play right away. Right here, honey. That's a good. Have it set up in a minute. <laughs> you can have your picture taken, huh? Yeah, that's right, honey. You don't want your picture taken, Charlie. Yeah, I guess you're right. You stand right here, huh, honey? Look at the camera. All right, honey, now a great big smile. Never mind, I'll tell it. Okay, honey, now a great big smile. Now. <laughs> Boy, isn't that great? Sure. Shall I have your picture taken? Yeah, give me a kiss. Ah, that girl. Hey, hey, how about that? Pretty, huh? Sure. Thanks. Yes, a strange man, this Charles Mendoro. The terror of this new holdup weapon, poison gas, spread through Chicago's currency exchanges. And during the next few months, the gang robbed more exchanges and got away with almost $40,000 in loot. Our department kept up a 24-hour alert, but despite our efforts, we were unable to apprehend them. A lot of Mendoro's share was spent on his child, for whom he had such a strange, half-crazy affection. All right, Dolly, it's bedtime. Start getting undressed. It's a good girl. There you are, honey, that's right. Ah, she's a great kid. Real great kid. You're spoiling her, all this stuff you keep buying. So it's a few bucks. The way we're doing these days, a few bucks don't mean a thing. I'll get her anything she wants. Yeah? 
And what's going to happen when you can't get her everything she wants? You're out of your head, Jean. I'd always get a gun to see she gets what she wants. Sure, I know. A gun or worse. Something bothering you, Jean? Yeah, something's bothering me. The kid, that's what. Something wrong with the kid? Something I don't know about? Oh, I guess it's something you don't know about. Don't get cagey when it comes to my kid. Don't get cute. Let go! What's wrong with the kid? You! You're wrong with the kid! Me? Wrong for the kid? You nuts? No, I'm not. Sure, you're a big deal now. What's gonna happen when you're not around anymore? There have been smart operators before. They all ended up the same way, doing time or dead. If you was real smart, you'd quit now while you're ahead. Quit? When I got a foolproof gimmick working for me? <laughs> Mendoro made frequent use of his gimmick, continuing a reign of terror based on threat of murder. Every cashier was well aware of his intentions and his weapon. Okay, sister. Pass over the door you got in the safe. No. You know who we are? Yes. I can guess. You know what happened to the other dame that didn't do what she was told? Yes. I know all about it. That wasn't smart, sister. Not smart at all. Outside, a Marine heard the cashier's screams. Trained for action, he intercepted Mendoro and tried to hold him. He was succeeding until Damiani took aim and fired. The Marine was struck in the leg, but he managed to hold on to the coat. Come on! All points quickly alerted. We were at the scene in the matter of seconds. One car covered the rear, we covered the front. Where'd you get you? Right here. You all right? Yeah, I'll be okay. okay fine. Poison gas gang. Now you better get the gas mask. We'll see who's in the building. I guess you know the guy's again if you saw him. Yeah, you're darn right I would. What about the man that shot you? No, I didn't get much of a look at him. Okay, well, take it easy. We've ordered an ambulance. Our efficient laboratory technicians went to work. They analyzed the gas, breaking it down to its primary ingredients. We wanted to find where and how the criminals obtained their supply. A thorough check was made for fingerprints. What'd you find out about that cylinder down at the lab? Fingerprints were badly smeared. They're still trying to find where the gas came from. What about this? Oh, that won't do us any good. It's a cheap make. There's a million just like it. You know, Larry, this might turn out to be the clue we're looking for. It's going to be tough, trying to locate one little girl in a city like Chicago. Yeah, it's going to be tough, all right. But we have discovered that this was made by a professional vendor. The background here is a little park on the south side. 
Larry will have copies made of this so that every policeman on the force gets one. We've got to find this little girl. During the next few days, one of the most intense searches in Chicago's history was launched. Every available man on the force checked neighborhoods. It was a tedious, unrewarding task. There was score upon score of negative answers. The smiling little girl and the playground in the background of the snapshot seemed strangers. The woman, just home from the market, said she had seen the little girl at the playground. A neighbor's child, she said. Okay, Larry, I've got the address. A stakeout was ordered in the apartment, and we raced to the playground. This had to be it. Are you push you high, Dolly? Pretty high. Uh -huh. Pretty high? Yeah. Pretty high. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Charlie. <laughs> the cops have got your place staked out. There's a million of them down there. Is that so? I've got the car here. Let's get out of town fast. In case you're right. Come on, honey. Yeah, now. Our daddy's gonna take you for a drive. You can't take her with you. She's your trademark. She's what put them on us. Remember the picture you had taken here? It's in the papers. Hey, that looks like a couple of cops coming this way. Yeah, honey, you play here, huh? Mommy will pick you up. We won't be bothered with these two anymore. There. Both of these killers recovered from the wounds received at the time of their arrest, and then were brought to trial for the murder of the cashier, Agnes Olson. Charles Mendoro, who first thought of using poison gas as a holdup weapon, was executed in the Cook County electric chair. Edward Damiani is now serving a dual sentence in the Illinois State Penitentiary of Joliet. 60 years and a one year to life. In just a moment, gangbusters will broadcast another clue to a person still at large and wanted by the police. Attention, attention to all citizens and police. Wanted and still at large, Jose Villa. Escaped federal prisoner, age 52, height five feet, four and one half inches, Weight, 142 pounds. Scar on left eyebrow. Repeating, scar on left eyebrow. Jose Villa, alias Joe Bella, alias Villa Jose, alias Frank Martinez. Then scar on left side of chin. Repeating, then scar on left side of chin. Jose Villa, convicted of desertion, petty larceny, shoplifting, assault, Vagrancy, burglary, theft, and numerous other violations. 
Jose Villa, escape federal prisoner. If you have any information concerning this clue, please notify your local police, the FBI, or gangbusters at once. Next week, gangbusters will bring you another case from authentic police files and records. Until then, on behalf of the police, we invite you to join us. Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord. you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews.